You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. Welcome, everyone, to Convenience Matters. My name is Chris Bolzinski with Nax. And I'm Jeff Leonard with Nax. And today we are joined by our good friend, Tim Young, who is a very experienced category manager within the convenience store space. Welcome, Tim. Well, hello, America. (laughs) That's right. And international. We have a very large international contingency listening to this podcast. Excellent. (laughs) So today we... We want to recap a little bit. Um, We threw you up on stage at our State of the Industry Summit back in April. And that is our big event of the year where we release all of our industry, financial, operational, and performance metrics. So we put you on stage so that you can talk about the center store, which is salty, candy, uh, alternative snacks, packaged sweet snacks, all that good stuff that we absolutely love to go and do a convenience store and find. So just want to ask you real quick, having been in this industry for as long as you have, what is it that drives excitement to the center store? You know, I tell you, first of all, I really appreciate that opportunity to come speak to you guys. Um, I was a nervous wreck when they walked me into the room. And <laughs> Never would have known. You know, and you look at all these chairs, you're like, oh, wow, okay, don't, don't choke. Full chairs, by the way, full, full chairs. Buzz. But really, when you look at Center Store, I've always envisioned a convenience store as being a concession stand for adults. So how do you come up with ways to add some excitement? Because a lot of times when people come in, you're catching them at all points during the day. So somebody might be having a great day. Somebody may not have a great day at all. So it's a matter of trying to put programs together that when people come in, they're going to walk out really satisfied. And we talked a little bit about experience because a lot of times that's what it is. It's Mm -hmm. about that experience. When you walk in there, you might find an item that takes you back to your childhood. When you remember going into a store or going to the concession stand with that, you know, two quarters and trying to make it last. Mm -hmm. So We've really put a lot of emphasis on, clearly, the majors are the majors, but how do you get a little bit deeper when you're looking at variety? So it's it's always been fun to look at new items, but also how do you put programs and promotions together that are just a little bit different that add excitement? And when you talk about a concession stand, you know, sometimes you're at a sporting event. Let's just pretend that the sporting event that we're at with gas prices where they are team's down. You're a little discouraged. So is there an opportunity that our industry has to kind of uplift people at that concession stand when, when gas prices are high and, and things are difficult and, and, and people feel pressure? Uh, how can Center Store and some of these items be positioned differently? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, and, and what we found really through the years, a lot of the items within candy and snacks, they've been somewhat recession proof. So most of them are relatively inexpensive. Um, but you're just trying to find ways. And right now, anymore today, we're just trying to make sure we have it. Mm-hmm. That's been a big challenge, quite honestly, for us. So, you know, you might have a great idea, but if you, if you can't get it, it's, it's been a little, little challenging. So we've worked hard on the merchandising aspect to create points of interruption, you know, have a promotional end cap that really kind of stops folks when they first walk in. We've invested a lot of time and energy in the queuing system. So when you're going to that point of purchase, uh, you're really, you're getting a chance to see some items that maybe you you just, you know, passed over. Um, so really for me, a lot of it comes down to merchandising and how do you do that differently? I've had the chance over the years to work for large organizations as well as some small family companies, but I've never been offered an exclusive m M&M or an exclusive Snicker bar or, or Reese cup. So how do you do things a little different? Because on a four corner stoplight, I want folks to come visit me. So how do I do that? And a lot of times that merchandising part will be very important. Yeah, I believe, um, I'm thinking back to our convenience voices, uh, research candy is the number one impulse item. 
in a convenience store and walking down that candy aisle, like you said, it is the concession stand for adults. There's so much excitement, but there's so th- there's a science behind how that is set up. It's very intentional. It might look like just, you know, random everything to the customer, but as a category manager, you've got that. I mean, that's a science for you. It is. And it's, it could be an episode of CSI because when you really get into it, there's so much detail that goes into it. So when you're putting your layouts together, you know, as you're looking at that end cap, that's by that Mountain Dew door, when that door opens and closes, how does that person turn? And when they turn, what do you position there? So, you know, a lot of times when you're getting into that and you're going through your plans on this is how the promotion should work. It should, this item should go here. When you go into stores and you don't see it, then you kind of, you get into the weeds a little bit with the folks in the store. You walk the manager back to the door and you say, okay, when we open this door and we close it, which way do you turn? They turn, they see it and they're like, I get it. I understand it now because you know, it's, it can be challenging because in today's world, labor is tough and, and finding people is, is a challenge. So you're always out there trying to figure out how do you make things simple? So I take a look at my career and I feel that a lot of the success that I've had in marketing has been because I've spent a lot of time in operations. Mm -hmm. So you understand it. And then getting out and visiting stores so you can see and talk to people. I mean, that's what the business is. And, you know, when I finished my, my conversation on stage, I talked a lot about people because this is a people business. And the more time that you invest in other people and and making them understand certain things, because then they become successful. And when they're successful, you're successful. And then we all win. Yeah. I'm going to shift to Salty for a minute because I think Salty performed pretty well in the last year coming out of the pandemic. And I think, um, you know, a lot of that had to do with people just being out and about again. And, you know, (laughs) there's so much excitement in salty snacks. I mean, the kids these days, they like things that set their mouth on fire and turn their fingers different colors. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the old standby. I, I like, you know, my, I have my favorites. I'm not allowed to mention them. I can't pick favorites, but I have them. But I mean, the, that category I've, I've noticed over the years that there's been some, there's been some shifts like nuts and seeds and things that are a little bit more healthy have, you know, they, they kind of teetered in and out of the top 10 here and there, but they've really started to, to stay like they've earned their place within the salty snacks category. I totally agree. And when you look back at, you know, 2020, when a lot of things shut down, definitely categories that took the hit seeds and nuts for sure, because the ball games, nobody was playing, <laughs> nobody was getting out. A lot of your breakfast energy bars uh, started to take a hit because that customer now was working from home and they weren't coming in until maybe early afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we, we stayed true to that when we looked at our our data for the resets going into 21. You basically, you know, take a lot of those categories and you, you push it aside and say, well, we're not going to make a whole lot of changes here because last year wasn't a true representation of what that category looks like. But you're right. Fire hot Cheetos, those things are absolutely crazy. They've got one. I think they've got some innovation coming out later this year. It's like a Carolina Reaper. I'm like, <laughs> what are what are you doing to me? Do not touch your eyes. That's all. Like, oh my god, yeah, don't, don't own contacts. To, yeah, don't touch your face. <laughs> I mean, but it does it does extremely well. Uh, so the hot side of the business continues to grow. There's folks that really enjoy that. Um, that's a little tough for me to enjoy, but once again, <laughs> my name has never been on a door. So <laughs> I have a nice little focus group that really like hot items and I can have them sample. And- Just ask them. <laughs> I, I like the, the talking about the science, the science of the concession stand. Let's just call it that. But um, we, we've had a couple episodes recently talking about road trips and, and what we what we've heard is that it, it's looking like it's going to be a strong summer with sales. So, you know, center store, obviously people coming in the store. And and one of the things that I've noticed and like you go to some good stores and and in the summer in particular, people when they're going on road trips are stopping in bathrooms. And then you come out of the bathroom and the first thing you see is like motor oil and gloves and it doesn't exactly say, "Hey, you hungry?" and it, it just 
felt like the, some the category manager is like, okay, I just for, it didn't experience things through the consumer's eyes. Like, how does the consumer shop? And one fifth of the consumers, if they use the bathroom, that's really the front door. So, any kind of science behind how you set up things, whether it's uh, positioning, price, pictures, as people consider different areas of the store, really their first entree into it. Yeah, that's that's a great question, Jeff. And, and really, you hit on a great point there. So when we first really started diving into how we were going to change some of our layouts uh, about six years ago, you know, you really try and invest. Now, granted, when you're in a smaller organization, you tend to lean a lot more on some of the information that, that the larger vendors can provide, like heat maps. <laughs> heat maps are incredibly important, but you do recognize that. So if you if you're watching traffic patterns of customers, and they're coming in and they're going straight to the bathroom. When they come out of the bathroom, that first section should be something that grabs their attention, not the motor oil. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we we spent a lot of time when we built our layouts to take a look at traffic patterns because that's a, a destination category. If you need motor oil, you're going to go find it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're, yeah. you're going to find it. So there is a lot that goes into that because when you do your layouts and set them up, it's all about adjacencies as well. So if you've got a, a wall of packaged beverage, and those are things that people are, tend to, to, to pick up and, and take for family gatherings or events, that's where you should merchandise a lot of your take-home chips because those go well together. Mm -hmm. And then when you're doing promotions, you keep it simple. That shopping experience, because all the data tells you that it's, what, maybe two minutes that they're in the store? Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to build that basket... Do your layouts with that in mind. Um, when it comes to, I think it was Leroy that talked about it, but I think he said that uh, like 43%, yeah, 43% of stops are premeditated. So people are, are planning before they ever get to the parking lot. And I think uh -huh. he said 38 was in route. So basically 81% of the customers are yeah. making the decision before they ever get to your lot. So Digital has become increasingly important. Loyalty programs, incredibly important. And then how do you communicate that? So we've still done a great job leveraging when you do get onto the lot because it is. People shop with their eyes. So it's a matter of what's your message? Is it price or is it is a product? So spending time to invest in that, but it's a whole new game. Yeah. Leroy and I, Leroy and I actually recorded a podcast a little bit ago on that convenience voices data. Yeah. And the other thing he might, you know, what comes out of that too, is that more than 80% of what is purchased in the C store, I think it's 83% to be exact is purchased, you know, within the hour of someone leaving. Is that correct, Jeff? Did I get that one right? Or is yeah, it immediate consumption? Immediate it's cons consumed yeah. within the hour. And I think 65, uh, at least the figure used to be 65 is consumed immediately, which yeah. means whatever that center store item is already being destroyed while you're walking out that door. Correct. And you mentioned, um, you mentioned the heat map stuff. So a little preview into the state of the industry report that's coming out in the month of June. Um, there are heat maps in there. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Heat maps are great. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, Jeff was talking about the, you know, the road trips and, and you know, how Summer Drive is looking. We we recorded a podcast with AAA. Summer Drive is going to be, as they said, sizzling this year. Uh, sizzling without the G. With Yeah. Sizzling, you know, N with the apostrophe on the yeah, N. No so G. hot, there's no G. I like yeah. it. I like it. <laughs> But uh, looking, but you know, for weekend warriors in the summertime, you know these these two categories in particular play very well into people who were or hitting the convenience store in you know that that nice like afternoon, late afternoon time, whether they're looking for a snack or they're looking to be rewarded because TGIF, like I got through it all. Um, and, you know, there's just, to me, like, these are two categories in particular that I, I think convenience stores should, I'm not going to say should, they do own. I don't know another channel that does it as well as ours. And I think um, looking at, um, there were certain, there were a couple, um, I'd say subcategories within the candy space that didn't do so hot, but we're hoping will rebound now that, you know, maybe pandemic is kind of behind us, but gum and mints, 
which I found interesting because nobody's breath smelled good behind a mask. Like nobody had good breath. But I would tell you that, you know, when we look at our, our data, that's definitely one that's um, done extremely well. And I think it's been a lot of the conversion over to the bottle packs and some of these bigger, bigger items. Um, that's definitely has driven some of the sales dollars units. You know, you, you still might be somewhat flat because it's a different, different conversion there, but governments have done, done well. Um, pack or uh, the, the peg bag section is also another one that continues to do well, even though there are so many issues with supply right now. And that's mm-hmm. been one that's been hit pretty heavily. So I think you find a lot of the retailers going to some of those, smaller companies that can really make sure you have it. Um, we did a, I think uh, cream, cream savers was a big one that was supposed to launch earlier this year. And there was, there was kind of a delay in that. So I had been working with a gentleman that had a, uh, a candy called scripture candy. And it was really uh, strawberry and cream, orange and cream. And they just came out with a new one called blueberry. But it has done so well. And you have to think, no, it's it's innovation. And and some of it when you look at it, it kind of takes you back to maybe when you were you know walking up to the concession stand with a dollar. Mm-hmm. But I could get it and I could have it consistently and, and we just didn't we didn't run out of it. So I think the brands that are doing extremely well are are on the shelf. You know, and yeah. that's hell, that's half the battle now. Yeah, and maybe maybe some of the dip had to do with the fact that um, coffee, hot dispense beverages, self serve. So I mean, a lot of that was taken offline. So it just takes a little bit to recover. Um, yeah, the other thing is if you've I have made the mistake before. I put in a breath mint and then I put a mask on, and if it's one of those strong ones, your your eyes water. You asphyxiate yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now both of you guys mentioned um, convenience voices and the idea of people purchase or having the intention of purchasing something before they even get to the store. And one way to incent people is to go on social media and to literally have no filter or have all kinds of filters. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Big hats, mustaches, accents, you name it. Uh, There you go. If only we were recording the video so everyone could see your ginormous red cowboy hat. That just took up the entire frame of. Like, yeah, it looked. It was a real one, but it may as well have been a cartoon. It was. It was bigger <laughs> than anything Yosemite Sam would ever try to put on. But you know, that's what you do on social media, and and you have a lot of fun with that. Have, have, what's the response that you get when you do these things? And it is. It's been. It's been incredible. So, I have done for years just kind of crazy birthday videos. And really that's kind of where it started. So I started sending out birthday videos to folks and then started to circulate some of those to the office. And they came to me one day and they said, Hey, would you mind maybe putting together some, some content for us? Because we were really trying to get our social media platforms off the ground um, and started to put some content out there and it, it started to take off. And then really it just got to a point where a lot of the feedback that I was getting, so I, I leveraged LinkedIn pretty heavy because I've, I've got a really good following there. But people would just, their response was great because they're like, you know what? I just get up in the morning and I, I, I see what you're doing today. Because a lot of times it started with our 12 days until Christmas promotion or we do the March Madness. And I'd always put them out there early because you got to go to work. You got you to head off. So you hit send and you put it out there. But it has been incredible. We were in Phoenix my daughter was playing in the nationals for volleyball and we were walking. Um, you know, it's a massive convention center full of thousands of people. And this guy says, Tim, and I'd like stop. And I'm walking with my wife and he's like, I love your videos on LinkedIn. And my wife's like, are you kidding? What? Because a lot of times what it is, is I will go upstairs and get my wardrobe and she'll see me and she, what are you doing? I like, well, I'm going to make a video. So you go down to the basement and create it. But it has been great. And, and the response has been great. And it's really, for me, it's a creative outlet because I know that there are a lot of folks that truly just enjoy the humor. And it's never been about 
me or, or trying to build my brand. It's just about having some fun with what you do. If you're passionate about what you do, you know, it'll, it'll come through. And like I said, I mean, you, you never know what somebody's dealing with on a given day. And yeah. if you could put something out there that, okay, it's Tim and this crazy mustache and a hat. And for just a second, takes their mind off what, what's going on. That's that's a value that I, I enjoy doing. And I, I, like I said, I'm a firm believer that we all have a purpose. And you just you got to figure out what your purpose is. And I'm not saying that creating crazy LinkedIn videos is my <laughs> purpose. But it's been fun and the response has been great. So I enjoy, I enjoy doing it. Yeah. You know, Tim, there's a lot of boring retail out there, but this channel is anything but. <laughs> You're right. When you look at a lot of the social media content, I mean, there are people all over the place just truly having fun with. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. I mean, it's. Yeah. I mean, there's major chains like ribbing each other all day long, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. And, and any advice for somebody who may not be as outgoing as Tim for how they might do something? Is it, is it, they have to step outside their comfort zone or find somebody who likes doing that or. You, you definitely can. Um, but when I look at some of the success we've had, you know, it's more about just kind of like that homegrown generic going into a store and getting a, a picture of the image of the product together. So it doesn't always have to be the crazy person out there in front. You know, you might have a, you know, you know, I've got a face for radio. So doing videos maybe not be the, the greatest thing for me. But if you put something together and you have a nice flow, nice content, a, a speaking voice that goes with it, that's just as well as some crazy dude in a mustache. Um, because it, it's just something that grabs their attention. I, I've had uh, I had a guy, an executive with with Coke one time reach out to me and, and told me, I pay a lot of money for content that's nothing compared to you. Now, for me, I'm like, that is awesome. That is awesome. So it's just have fun with it. You know, no one's, no one's, I'm not expecting any uh, Academy Awards for, you know, my, <laughs> my uh, inter interpretation of what uh, Timothy Burgundy would be like, but just have fun with it. And I think that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah. And the beauty of social media is that if you don't like something, you can take it down. <laughs> you can redo it and repost it. <laughs> Move on. Yeah. I do have to correct myself for a second, though, because I said that gum, I think I said gum and candy, candy rolls and mints in the same breath and actually gum did pretty well. So before anyone gets mad at me, gum did good. <laughs> Because it's very difficult to blow bubbles with a mask on. So now that the masks are, are tend to be more off, you blow, can blow bubbles, bubbles all day yes. long. Well, I think we're at the time in the program where we're going to have a trivia question that uh, we have every week. So cue music. And what we try to do is we try to have some sort of industry-themed trivia. And we try to either tie it to the topic at hand or the person talking. So a, I'm going to start off with something that feels deceivingly easy. And then I have a follow-up here. So here we go with the first part of that. Convenience stores operate one-third of all the ATMs in the country. What does ATM stand for? Is that for me? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Automated teller machine. You are correct. It's sometimes, sometimes it's called automatic teller machine, but it is never, ever, ever called ATM machine because that's machine twice. Now, the second part of this for sports fan Tim, one of the early promoters of ATMs was DocuTel, a company out of Dallas, which was run by Jack Meredith. What did Jack Meredith do to close sales? Who's Jack Meredith? Man, is it Don Meredith's dad, maybe? It's his, it's his brother. And he would fly clients to Dallas headquarters. His brother, the Cowboys quarterback, would show up with his teammates and the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, and he would sign that contract, and everybody would leave with a signed contract. So that's how you run a business. Next video, I'm thinking, hmm, how do I do that? Dandy Don. So thank you. You're a winner. 
And uh, you're you don't get anything, but you won. <laughs> we, we have a giant hat in the mail to you, <laughs> except it's electronic, so we'll just email it to you. Well, thank you, Tim, for joining us. As always, it's a pleasure, and we appreciate you being on Convenience Matters, and we hope that we can have you on again very soon. And for anyone who's listening, uh, please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast player and check us out at conveniencematters.com. So until next time. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nax and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.